I am here in front of a Berlin bakery. It may not be your super typical bakery, but this is a very special one which I'm gonna show you in this video and we will be lucky enough to actually see a whole tour of how the bread is being made in a big bakery that is um, baking bread a little bit more like you would bake it at home. What you see here is the milling room and you can actually hear the mills going. Now we're inside the milling room. You can see all the grains are left that they mill all their own flour here at their bakery. And here you can see the miller. It's a lot of hard work. He puts the grain sacks on top of one of the mills. And I don't think he needs to go to the gym in the afternoon, but he does get massages. <laughs> so I heard. And then he just very simply dumps all the grains right into the chute of the mill, as you can see here. And these are pretty simple mills. If you're familiar with the mock mills, they're just a bigger version, sort of like your mock mill on steroids, but essentially the same mechanism and the same principle. Then he starts the mill. There is a clicking noise and then it starts milling the grains into flour. And here you can see the milled flour coming out at the bottom. Up here you can see the grindstones turning. I love this simple device that regulates how fast the grain is being fed into the grain mill. If you move this little tab up, it's being slower, and if you move it down, it goes faster. This is where the freshly milled flour is collected in these big paper bags, and the miller shows us what the freshly milled grain looks like. This is the grain mill that's only for wheat flour. They have three and this one is only for wheat flour and has this box here which is super fun and we get to see what it does in just a second. He has to do something here. So the milled flour goes into this box and there is a canvas bag with a bit of a mesh on the bottom and it is it's being shaken so that your flour gets sifted and it comes out very fine. You can see it right here, very fine flour and the bran is collected here and used for something else. Now we get to see the pre-ferment. Here is the milled flour in bags and boxes, bins. And in these big stainless steel bowls if you will vats we see the pre-ferment the levain and it is a rye starter which looks just like my starter at home very runny he explains us how many pounds of flour or actually he talks about kilograms and liters of water and the various ratios but this is a lot of sourdough starter that actually gets a little bit flour later. Up here is a pot with butter and they use the butter to grease their loaf pans and the loaf pans are connected. I think it's always four together and this is all the loaf pans they have. Here we get to see how bread is being made. Now this is not really the real deal here, this is a rest dough, a remainder dough, so to speak. It's actually various doughs and they always get repurposed, so nothing is ever thrown out. But it has various leftover doughs from other breads and rolls. And he's going to show us how the bread is 
rolled. He's going to use his little bowl scraper. And get out some dough. Over here you see the scale, and I love that everything is measured by hand. They don't have any machines doing that, which is what I love so much about this bakery because it is the real deal. And he sets it to 910 grams. And as he explains this, dough was a little bit older, so um, he doesn't quite have the feel for it. If it was fresh dough, he'd probably get it spot on just from experience. So now we have 910 grams. And then he shows us with another piece of dough, because I think he always does two at a time. Flour the surface, and if your dough is really sticky at home, here's a little tip, just dip your hands in the flour on the work surface. And then he is shaping the loaves. There's a particular method, the um, stretching to create the gluten structure, but remember this dough is actually a little bit older, so it doesn't quite behave as fresh dough, but you also want to use the heel of your hand and not press in the middle, but kind of on the side. So there's a very particular method here that he's showing us. And I'm definitely gonna try that at home next time I make a bread. As you can see, the gluten didn't quite hold up because it is an older dough. So either he can roll it into a long oval with the seam down, I'll put that in a loaf pan, or you just hammer away with your hand, turn it into an oval and put it in the loaf pan. Just because I asked, here's how they let the breads rise. They cover them with a piece of plastic and let them rise just underneath the ceiling because the temperature is much warmer up there and they sit there for about 30 45 minutes before they're being baked in this big industrial stone oven you can see rolls in there that are being dried and turned into breadcrumbs that are being used for dough so nothing is ever thrown out i had to stop in the other room where there's this huge Hobart stand mixer. It looks like my KitchenAid, but just on steroids, and I absolutely love it. It's over 30 years old. We're now in the front room. You can see all the various rolls that they make and the various breads in the wooden shelves at the back wall. I just absolutely love it. It's a very typical German bakery, and we get to see it in action. The Miller selling bread, and here we have some fresh cakes that are being put out. Now I asked him if he can show us all the different types of breads that they bake and sell. And he's just gonna put them on the counter here. I think I lost count, but it may be seven different types of bread. If you get a different number, let me know in the comments below. But most of them are actually made in loaf pans, which is a little bit different from a lot of artisan breads in the United States. I found that very interesting. The first one is a flax seed bread with 100% wheat. The flax seeds are directly added to the pre-ferment, which makes this bread particularly soft. Next is a bread with herbs, both inside the bread and on top, and it's the same dough as the rye wheat bread. One is oval, and the other one is baked in a loaf pan. This is a coarse grind bread with a lot of sourdough starter and only a little bit of flour. It has flaked rye berries in the dough. And this is a whole berry bread with lots of sourdough starter and whole wheat and rye berries that are cooked one hour before, which makes them very soft and the bread lasts a long time. It easily keeps for two weeks at room temperature when it's super fresh. The bread is actually a little bit sticky.
frischhaltiges Brot. Ähm, dieses Brot kann man locker zwei Wochen schaffen. Instead of many words, he's actually going to show us. He's going to cut the bread in half. And we get to see the dough that is very sticky on the inside, very moist and sticky. Over here we have a white wheat bread that is not sourdough but made with yeast and a spelt bread with a spelt sourdough starter so it's a hundred percent spelt bread. And this bread is 80% rye and 20% wheat. So now I'm asking for the most popular bread which is the rye wheat bread and the flaxseed bread. And as soon as I'm coming out, the sun is coming out. I hope that's a good sign. Thank you so much for watching. And if you are interested in making your own breads, I have a video right here that you can watch. I'll see you over there. And thank you for watching.